For over a century, a hidden struggle has been unfolding in the heart of the church. Most people have no idea about the chilling vision experienced by Pope Leo XIII in 1884, an event that unveiled Satan's 100-year plan to dismantle Christianity from within. The question we must confront today is whether this period has finally come to an end or if we are entering the final and most perilous phase of this cosmic battle. On a clear October day in 1884, as Pope Leo XIII finished celebrating Mass in his private Vatican chapel, something extraordinary happened. His face became pale, his eyes fixated on something unseen, and those nearby saw his expression turn to one of terror. For about ten minutes, he stood motionless, as though in a trance. When he finally stirred, he looked deeply troubled, his lips trembling as he whispered a prayer. Those present were worried and asked what had happened. Pope Leo XIII later shared a vision that still echoes through the corridors of time. In this vision, he heard a conversation between God and Satan. Satan boasted that he could destroy the church if he were given the power and the time to do it. He specifically asked for 75 to 100 years to accomplish his mission and greater influence over those who would give themselves to him. God, in a voice of divine authority, granted this period to Satan to test the church, to shake its foundations, and to challenge its very existence. Shaken by this revelation, Pope Leo XIII immediately took action. He composed a prayer known as the Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel and ordered that it be recited at the end of every low mass throughout the world. The words of this prayer were not chosen lightly, they were a rallying cry, a call to arms in a spiritual war that would last for generations. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil, it begins, a plea for heavenly protection in the face of Satan's unleashed fury. Satan sought a concentrated period in which he could target the church, its followers, and the very fabric of Christian society. His goal was clear, to corrupt from within, to spread division, to sow confusion, and to turn the faithful away from God. And if we look closely at the past century, we see signs of this plan unfolding like a shadow over the world. First, there was the corruption within the church itself, scandals and betrayals that struck at the heart of faith, damaging trust and leaving a trail of spiritual wounds. These were all parts of a coordinated assault, chipping away at the integrity of those meant to guide the flock. Alongside this came the persecution of Christians across the globe. In the 20th century alone, more Christians were martyred than in any previous period, a chilling testimony to the heightened ferocity of Satan's attacks. From the brutal suppression of faith under communist regimes in Russia and China to the violent targeting of Christian communities in the Middle East and Africa, Satan's influence manifested in the blood of the faithful. But his plan did not stop at physical persecution. Satan was cunning. He knew that a direct attack would only strengthen the church. So, he moved subtly, influencing the spread of heresies, sowing seeds of doubt and confusion. From the rise of modernism that sought to dilute the authority of scripture and twist doctrine to fit human desires, to the proliferation of new age philosophies that promised spirituality without sacrifice, these were all part of his plan to undermine true faith. As these ideologies spread, they replaced the sacred with the profane, stripping society of its spiritual roots, leaving it vulnerable to despair and moral chaos. If we fast forward to today, there are signs that this 100-year period might be reaching its climax. We are living in times marked by spiritual confusion on a global scale, where moral certainties are rapidly eroding and ancient truths are being questioned or discarded altogether. The world is more connected than ever, yet spiritual alienation has never been greater. 
churches that were once filled with the faithful now stand empty in many parts of the world. Scandals and controversies continue to shake the church, sowing division among believers and driving many away. Meanwhile, there is a growing obsession with self and material wealth, a cultural shift that places personal happiness above all else, even at the expense of truth and virtue. Yet, amidst this darkness, there are glimmers of light, signs that something is shifting. Across the world, there is a renewed interest in traditional practices, an increasing number of believers who are turning back to the roots of their faith, seeking solace in the old devotions, the rosary, the prayers to saints, the sacred heart of Jesus, and, of course, the prayer to Saint Michael. There are movements within the church that are calling for a return to the teachings that have stood the test of time, a rejection of watered-down doctrines, and a return to the spiritual discipline and prayer that sustained Christians through the darkest of times. Could this be a sign that Satan's 100-year period is ending, or are we on the brink of an even more desperate phase of this battle? It's tempting to think that the period of Satan's 100-year plan may have already ended or is about to conclude. Some believe that the spiritual victories we see, the resurgence of faith in unexpected places, the renewal of interest in the sacraments, and the renewed emphasis on spiritual warfare might be signs that Satan's influence is waning. The faithful are becoming more aware of the dangers around them, more committed to defending the truth, and more vocal in their rejection of falsehood. But is this truly the end, or merely a prelude to an even greater struggle? If Satan knows his time is short, he may intensify his efforts. A cornered enemy is often the most dangerous. What must we do in the face of this uncertainty? Now is the time to renew our dedication to prayer and repentance. There can be no complacency. The prayer to St. Michael is more relevant today than ever. It should be on our lips daily, a constant reminder of the spiritual battle we are engaged in. But prayer is only the beginning. Each of us must prepare ourselves spiritually for whatever lies ahead. This means frequent confession, participation in the sacraments, and a deepening of our personal relationship with God. We must fill our homes with holy objects, read scripture regularly, and commit ourselves to acts of mercy and love. The faithful must stand firm in the teachings that have been handed down through the centuries. We must educate ourselves, understand our faith more deeply, and be prepared to defend it in the public square, in our homes, and in our hearts. We must reject secular ideologies that lead us away from God and embrace a life that is aligned with His will. For the battle is not over, it is far from over. Whether we are approaching the end of Satan's 100-year plan or entering its most critical phase, the need for vigilance, courage, and unwavering faith has never been more urgent.